Hello. Um, I've changed the blackboard here a little bit. Uh, it's just a little bit higher. I don't know if that will work out or not. Uh, I, I, it's maybe a little high, but you, you might notice such a thing. Uh, we'll see how it works. Uh, now, this is the 14th uh, day of, uh, of part two, uh, first video. And I'm backing up in my mind a little bit. I forgot to tell you that if you fly, well, I suppose anywhere, I, you, uh, a window seat now is not as important as it once was to me. And if I had known, uh, I would have uh, done better on that flight if I'd had a seat in the aisle where I could have stood up quite a bit, or even stood for an hour at a time. Uh, but I always wanted a window seat because I wanted to see out there. And in fact, I saw Norway from above, and I saw Sweden from above, and I liked that. But what's different is now they have cameras uh, under the planes, and or wherever, and uh, in any seat you can really look in the camera and see it just as well, or better, what's below you. I'll remember that from now on. All right, I don't want to go on and on about Shirley, but the one thing I think I should have said yesterday is if there's anything she does well, it's figure out how somebody, how she can help somebody. Uh, I'm not the only one that she has helped, uh, but that's, that defines her personality in some ways. She is so good at figuring out a way to help somebody out, and I've been the lucky beneficiary of so much help. All right, well, she helped me. Uh, the reason I, we left from Harbord, or I left from Harbord, was because uh, that way we had more time. We had never really met uh, before, and we had a little bit more time. If I had left from Hamburg, which I could have, I might have had to be on the train at 8 o'clock or, or, or 9 o'clock. From Harbord, it was more like 10.30 or 11 that I could get on the train in order to make it to Paris that night. And uh, so we said goodbye, and, and off I went. Now that plane, uh, that train ride uh, was very interesting, but I was still not feeling that good. And I don't have film footage of it. I wish that I had some of it, because I was going by farms, farm after farm after farm, that had uh, barns that were Fachwerk barns, uh, beautifully made. Uh, that was at the beginning of it. Uh, it was a rainy day, and it was cold, uh, not in the train. Uh, and uh, another thing that I was, see, I had to make connections, and that was a steady worry. Was there enough time to make that connection? This was extreme travel. Uh, we had not built very much slack into this at all. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I, I began to get worried about this because there was the delay in the German, the, while I was still in Germany, there was a, an obstruction on the track or something and, and we were going to be 20 minutes late. Well, Brussels was the critical one. I needed to, I needed to make a connection there uh, in order to get to Paris that night. And uh, I do remember uh, Kern, uh, Cologne, we say in, in English, uh, I got to see the cathedral uh, uh, from just from the train, but it, it was very near. And uh, uh, I finally did make it to Brussels uh, in time to catch the high velocity train, uh, TV, TGV, Train de Grande Velocité, I think, TVG. Uh, and I did make it to Paris on time. But I got looking at the map that I was holding which you can see, if, if it's online, URL-map-2011 PDF file, I think you can just download it if you work out a little bit. And I was looking, is there some other way that I can get to Paris that night if I miss that connection? Because Erica and I had to get leave Paris the next morning at about 7 in the morning. Uh, and I was getting pretty worried about it. I, as I say, I did make it. But, uh, that's the delay, and, uh, but I wanted to tell you that on the train for a while, the most wonderful experience happened. I was sitting there, my German was not good at all yet, uh, and for a while in the car, car that I was in, there were only three people. There was a mother, her, her little daughter, and myself, and, and we didn't talk, but that little girl sang. She was little, and she sang 
for hours. Uh, and I thought of uh, something at the time, uh, and I'll, I'll show it. I'll show it to you here. It, it's it's Wordsworth poem called "The Solitary Reaper." It's in this collection of books. That's a seventh grade uh, literature book. That's the one I'm going to show you. Uh, here's the eighth grade one. <clears throat> very very good. I've taught from both of those. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, here's the ninth. I haven't ever taught from that. And here's the tenth grade book, Adventures uh, in English Literature. Possibly the best uh, literature book I have ever seen. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> back to Wordsworth. The Solitary Reaper, uh, a, a poem of his. Here it is. Uh, I don't know if you want to read the whole thing. Possibly you could pause and see the whole thing. Uh, I won't read it all to you. But uh, he tells of a time that he was walking and he came across a woman who was reaping in the field, harvesting. And the whole time that she was harvesting, she was singing. And he didn't understand the language. It was probably Scottish or something. Behold her single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself, stop here or gently pass. I'm not going to read the whole poem to, it, to you. But uh, he didn't understand, but he was struck by the beauty of this woman singing, just for no audience at all. And, and uh, that's what I thought with this little girl who sang like a bird. At the end it goes like this, Whate'er the theme the maiden sang, as if her song could have no ending, I saw her singing at her work and o'er the sickle bending. I listened. Motionless and still, and as I mounted up the hill, the music in my ear I bore long after it was heard no more. I will not be forgetting the sweetness of the sound of that little girl singing so much. Well, I made it to Paris, um, and uh, I think I'll, 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 I had the dilemma of getting across Paris uh, to, a, to a hostel, uh, and I'll tell you about that, I think, tomorrow. But meantime, Erica, who had, we had departed ways in Dulles. She had had now two days or almost two days in Paris. And in the next video, it'll be point two, I will show you um, a, a slideshow, I guess you call it a slideshow, made from Erica's photos as she walked around uh, Paris during that time and Shirley has put them together uh, She's always helping with this course. So uh, you're going to see some of Paris from my daughter's viewpoint. I think you'll find it different uh, from what you might expect. See you tomorrow.